So with this, ladies and gentlemen, now we have our special guest with us. We request Shri D K Sharma, MD, MMM OCL, to please join us on stage. Everyone, please welcome him on the dais with a round of applause. Can I please request Mr. Narendra Shah, founder and managing editor, Metro Rail News, to please join us on stage to kindly welcome Shri D K Sharma with a bouquet. A very, very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you so much for your kind presence. Shri D K Sharma, MD, MMOCL. After graduating in electrical engineering, he joined Indian Railways as an Indian Railway Service of Electrical Engineers officer in 1980 and has held various important posts during his tenure on Central, Western, South Central, and Konkan Railway. We request our other panelists to please join us. We will now start the panel discussion on advancement in artificial intelligence for metro and railway. We request once again Mr. Nitin Manoj to please join us. Let's welcome Mr. Nitin Manoj, MD Technocrat, call here Infrastructure Private Limited. We welcome Mr. Anthony Abuta, DNI Group Leader, Intel Corporation USA, to please join us as panelist. Mr. Tony Abuta is a senior transportation PME and architect for Intel's video, Smart Cities and Transportation Organization. He is responsible for identifying the critical challenges in transportation industry and developing innovative digital solution employing cutting edge technologies for passenger safety and operational efficiency. We request Sri A.K. Singh, ex-CEO, WPO, Railway Projects and Rolling Stock Expert, Northern Railway, to please join us on stage. Let's welcome Sri A.K. Singh. With over 34 years of experience in Indian Railways, Government of India, he headed workshop construction project organization under Ministry of Railways, managing large-scale construction project complete with industrial township, heavy machinery and plant, residential complex, rail and road connectivity, etc. He supervised three major greenfield workshop construction project and 16 expansion project worth Rs. 1600 crores. We request our next guest on stage as moderator, Mr. Rajesh Agarwal, consultant, former member, Rolling Stock Railway Board, Ministry of Railways. Sri Rajesh Agarwal belongs to 1980 batch of Indian Railway Services of Mechanical Engineering. Prior to this appointment, he was general manager of Modern Coach Factory at Rai Bareilly. Sri Agarwal has experience in turnaround management, operation, manufacturing, logistic, engineering, and public administration. Let's welcome our panelists and our moderator on stage. Let's start the discussion. Over to you, our moderator, Mr. Rajesh Agarwal. Uh, good morning, everybody. I think we are into a futuristic and very interesting discussion on what is actually the need of the hour right now is to get into artificial intelligence in all different aspects of operation. We'll have artificial intelligence inside the passenger area. We'll have artificial intelligence on the roadside where we are watching the rolling stock. We'll have artificial intelligence working in the depots where we are actually maintaining our stock. We'll have artificial intelligence in various areas of operation. So we have a panel of experts I'd like to start with you, Mr. D.K. Sharma, if you can tell us how you feel artificial intelligence now is going to be a game changer in uh, the metros. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to tell about uh, my company. Uh, I'm heading a company which is looking after the operation and maintenance of uh, metro lines in Mumbai metropolitan region. 
because Mr. Agrawal asked me what is OCL, Operation Corporation Limited. Uh, we have a slightly different model, uh, uh, unlike other metros, uh, uh, here in Mumbai we have made a company which is exclusively accountable, responsible for operation and maintenance, unlike other metro where project as well as operation are with the same metro. So with that background, uh, we are one of the youngest company. Uh, Mumbai, we have uh, one line which was with private sector in the PPP model. Uh, some of you may be familiar, Varsova Ghat Koper, east-west connectivity, about 12 kilometer. After that, recently we have commissioned 20 kilometer metro network in Mumbai, from Dahisar to a place called uh, uh, Kamar Ajnagar <coughs> or in, uh, something near Malad, which is along the new link road. And another line from again Dahisar to a place called RA, which is along the Western Express Highway. So it's a V-shaped movement. Uh, so uh, when we started this company, we wanted to be slightly different, uh, lean and trim and uh, leveraging technology much more. So there comes the role of uh, what Mr. Agrawal said, artificial intelligence. So uh, when I, I was seeing the topic, there are three topics, something like automatic examination, ticketing and uh, uh, predictive maintenance. So as far as um, uh, artificial intelligence concerned, I think uh, very few metros have really, uh, when I took over this company about three years back, uh, everybody has used artificial intelligence in piecemeal. But I think uh, one metro which, singles, uh, which I would like to single out is uh, Hyderabad metro, which is the, presently the only metro which is in private sector because other two metro, be the airport line, be the uh, Gurgaon metro, they have already been taken over. I think so. We have started uh, asset management system. We are trying to work uh, uh, with minimum manpower so that uh, we can have condition monitoring, like uh, some of the items we have already started, like axle box temperature, pantographic strip, uh, wear, then um, any loose uh, hanging object, roof, uh, pento OH interaction. Uh, so few things we have already started and asset management system, uh, the software, IBM software we are going to use, which will have the interface with all the systems Unlike most of the metro, they have taken like maybe rolling stock or maybe signaling. We are trying to have an interface with all the systems, typically six, seven, eight system. And on real-time basis, we would like to monitor all the assets. We'll get the real-time alarms, real-time uh, uh, sensors will give you the temperature, the pressure, the vibration, the noise. So instead of going for scheduled maintenance, which we have been doing, uh, almost uh, at least uh, when I was in railways, Mr. Agrawal, we have been doing mostly the scheduled maintenance. We do a maintenance whether maintenance is needed or not. We have decided something. But here we would like to maintain it when it's really required. And we would like to see whether, seeing the trend of different parameters, we would like to see whether we really uh, need to maintain it. We really need to open the equipment. Not too early, not too late, just in time. And we say the inventory just in time, so maintenance should also be just in time. So not over maintenance, because, and then a whole lot of things will be monitored on real time basis, be the inventory, be the procurement, be the uh, uh, planning, and uh, that will release a lot of, like Mumbai, you must have read in the newspapers, uh, we have a huge problem of establishing our depot. Uh, like RA, you must have seen RA, we wanted to maintain like a forest area, so we could not make the depot RA. How to have minimum lines to maintain the assets? So I think uh, uh, having this predictive maintenance, condition monitoring, I will need the minimum uh, workshop line, minimum maintenance line. So that is one area where we are trying to focus. Another area we are trying to focus is ticketing. I have been of the firm opinion because uh, uh, like in railways, uh, my uh, thinking is when a person comes to the station, he should not waste a single second in any activity other than travel. He should come, board the train, get out. And why should he stand in the queue? Why should he purchase the tickets? So to begin with, we are going to launch a mobile application. It will be mobile ticketing so that person can check in and check out. And uh, the, uh, through payment gateway, payment will be made. But when I am studying the another, the future of ticketing, 
which is something like be in and be out. Not instead of checking, checking in you have passenger has to do certain activity, he has to check in particular station, he has to check out, but here in be in, be out, you have the mobile phone, I think now everybody has the mobile phone, it will have NFC and we will have certain beacons at the train and also at the station. You have the mobile in your pocket, you enter a station, you board a train, you get down at, from the train, you get out from the station. So everything can be monitored. So a uh, person need not do anything. So uh, uh, the technology takes care of everything. So it is inclusive. I need not have a card. I need not have an account even. Or whatever what, uh, different options are available. I may have a bank account. I may have a card. I may have a mobile payment system. So uh, minimum, so and it, that approach should be inclusive, whether account holder or non-account holder. So there's a few area we have, we are trying to work on it, and uh, uh, just the beginning. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, thank you. Oh, well, that was excellent. Actually, we can see that uh, you're daily thinking for the future, and uh, you've also, you know, brought us uh, up to date with a lot of activity going on in maintenance and ticketing, so many different areas and going towards predictive maintenance. Not preventive maintenance, but directly to predictive maintenance, that's going to be very good. So Mumbai is maximum city. We'll be expecting maximum advancement in AI from Mumbai. And I'm sure that uh, given what you told us, uh, you're definitely you know, on track for that. So let me go directly to Mr. Tony. And let me divide the areas, you know, if you're looking at artificial intelligence. Uh, we are looking at AI for security, we are looking at AI for safety. We are looking at AI for maintenance. We are looking at AI for passenger interface, like ticketing. And we are looking at AI for passenger comforts, uh, different areas, you know, in which AI can get integrated. So what is your take? How do we, how do we proceed? I mean, it's all together, or we have separate buckets, or we have separate, you know, thrust areas. Uh, I mean, please uh, tell us what, what is your take on that? Yeah, uh, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me to this uh, conference. It's a pleasure to listen to uh, the very great minds. Um, as you know, I'm from Intel, and AI is our bread and butter. We breathe in AI. We have chips that are AI-infused. We have software that's AI-infused. So there's no better person or no better company that understands AI than Intel, and we're here. Um, at Intel, we look at AI in this way. We have predictive maintenance, we have safety and security, and then we have passenger experience. If you think about AI, you know, it's, it's already here. We just want to see how we can scale it in uh, the metro rail, the rolling stocks, the, the rail yards. And with AI, what makes it smart is you have all these sensors that are positioned everywhere. And how do you make the data that comes from that sensor, how do you compute all the data that's coming in from those sensors and make some sense out of it, right? Uh, if you're talking about improving passenger experience, right, you want to make sure that you have this seamless transition of passengers from wherever they're going so that they have uh, touchless ways of ticketing. And you can have AI predict um, when there's congestion, when there's queues uh, piling up. So, there's so many ways that we can use the data that we're getting from the various sensors, whether they are cameras, whether they are sensors on the tracks uh, to, to look at uh, defects on the tracks, to look at defects on the wheels, to look at uh, passenger uh, behaviors on the trains. So it just depends on how metro rails, how um, you know, operators of various uh, types of transportations want to utilize AI. AI is a very powerful tool that can help uh, you know, the people who are deploying it uh, efficiently utilize the, the, their systems, efficiently utilize their, um, you know, their networks. Uh, Intel has a very extensive suite of AI development kits, and this is something that I'm talking to uh, independent uh, software vendors uh, who are trying to look for how can we start uh, you know, deploying artificial intelligence uh, we have use cases that have already been optimized with AI-infused data that you can come over to uh, Intel and we can provide you that information. 
But coming back to the railway sector, um, I think AI is a game changer because it will really enable us uh, efficiently manage our railways. Um, you know, as you talk about predictive maintenance, there's so many ways that companies will be able to run efficiently the systems uh, because you really don't want to be sending people out to the, you know, to the rail yards. Uh, you have so many tracks, miles and kilometers of railway, uh, railway tracks that really need to be maintained. How do we effici efficiently maintain that railway uh, uh, network? How do we see where the, we have cracks? How do we see where we have issues with, uh, you know, with the tracks? One of the key things you want to know is 60% of railway accidents are caused by issues on tracks, you know, derailment. And, you know, you really don't have a lot of people who can go out there and physically look at the issues on the rail yard, on the tracks. You have to use computer vision. Uh, you have to use some sensors. And all those sensors have a lot of data that has to be processed somehow, you know. And that's why Intel has this array of different computers or, uh, you know, CPUs processing power. We have analytical, um, you know, software that can make sense of this data and provide this, uh, you know, uh, predictive analysis that can help operators, that can help decision makers to make their railway operations efficient. So, um, you know, to me, I think railway uh, operators uh, should look at deploying AI, uh, you know, products uh, they're going to make your life much easier. They're going to make the passenger's experience much more uh, rich. And I think this is something that's already been deployed in other places of the, of the world. And we as Intel are here to help you guys uh, achieve that here in, uh, in India. And I want to end with that. So uh, Intel will be able to give the hardware, the IoT, the Internet of Things, and the software drivers and the engines to actually give an AI engine which is into machine learning mode. Yes, so, so if you understand Intel, we provide the ingredients that enable AI. We have the chips that have already been infused with AI. They're optimized for AI, right? We have the software that can also run AI. You know, it, when you look at my presentation that I'm gonna be doing next over here, we have the one API tool that has a library of uh, de development kits that can help anyone who wants to deploy AI successfully do that in a very efficient way, very quickly. You know, we, we already have use cases that are utilizing AI in different other, um, you know, in, in our ecosystem of partners. Uh, one of the things that Intel brings to the table is we have so many partners in so many different places of the world that have already deployed AI. They have use cases that are already working right now uh, that we can bring into the table using an Indian-made company, uh, because we're talking about made in India, right? Mm. So we can bring in that technology, you know, train our colleagues over here, train our partner ecosystems here in India to deploy that as soon as possible, because this is already technology that's making a lot of difference in other railway organizations, uh, you know, uh, in some places here in India and around the world that we can replicate here using Intel's, uh, you know, thought leadership. Yeah, so I think there are very vast number of areas, as uh, he has explained, and AI can be employed in both petros and the railways. And uh, what you've also told us is that Internet of Things, you know, can be put in uh, so many different locations. And uh, maybe in the CCTV cameras or in the various sensors that we have all over the coach, uh, we can have the Internet of Things and these can, you know, be driven by AI engines which will get into machine learning mode and vastly improve the service as far as security, as far as safety, as far as maintenance, as far as operation, commercial, whatever area we are looking at. So let me take one example. Let's say we have a platform screen door and uh, in that you have some IOTs. Now this screen door is on the platform, maybe in so many platforms, watching maybe thousands, hundreds of thousands of passengers. And uh, as you are got this dumb screen door over there which is opening and closing as per some logic. Does it also have some intelligence to check whether a miscreant is entering or a normal person is entering? Uh, so thank you for that uh, question because uh, I'm uh, really keen to answer that because 
it would actually open up a lot of things. So first of all, uh, as a manufacturer, uh, you know, what we are doing right now in terms of, uh, you know, this intelligence, it is uh, not uh, restricted to the number of people who are passing because um, uh, in BRTS, <clears throat> since it has started, it uh, almost works for 12 to 14 hours every day. And as I mentioned, the failure rate is uh, less than 0 0.05. That's what our SLA is. So how we are actually using AI is more uh, in terms of tracking and the maintenance. So let me give an example. When a few years back we installed uh, this uh, uh, dose on a BRTS Ahmedabad, so there was no way to, you know, keep tracking how much is a failure apart from just a manual way of that uh, somebody writes it then gives the sheet in the end of the day and uh, then that particular thing is passed it on to the certain room, the data is done after one month you know. So now uh, just giving an example for a latest uh, Hubli Dharwad where we have installed this uh, be a, you know, platform screen doors. So the um, SLA AI is getting used to the extent of ge getting our own uh, SLA tracked with that. So, say any door is um, at any particular time did not function. So, if it is uh, uh, malfunction or if it did not open, did not close, whatever it is, it would immediately give that particular bus stop with the door number, with the uh, anatomy and then it would mention so and so door at so and so time in a day did not uh, actually function. So, how they track it, as I mentioned, 99. 99% the dose has to work at a time. So, for example, on our SDBRTS, we have installed uh, about, uh, uh, you know, almost 300 doses. So, at any given time, 99% of 300 doses has to work. The moment it passes more than that, so immediately that would get into the RAID and same day it would mention that you have surpassed that and the data would come and on the basis of that, uh, maintenance our deduction would happen. So, this has been getting used to the T and you know, the kind of level as he mentioned about they are giving different chips and that's what we are trying to use to see that how we can able to give the maximum data of the product at to throughout working. So, that's how actually this AI is helping more than us to the client because we are getting penalized for giving our own AI to them that how much did it work and how much not. Hmm. Although that's excellent, you know, at a component level, the data logging that's going on is becoming more and more advanced and it's helping reduce the failures and reducing the downtime, improving the reliability, so many different areas. And I'm sure that as you develop further, that same platform screen door can have a little webcam which can also start watching what's happening in front of it and then be able to intelligently, you know, give you a lot of data of what's going on in front of it or people are banging it or people are rubbing against it or hitting it or, uh, you know, crowding against it, whatever. So, I, I think this is an area which is uh, boundless. So, at the component level, even in CCTVs, you know, today you got the capacity to decide or to find out whether the guy that CCTV is looking at as a miscreant or is he a normal person or is he a person with some trouble or whatever. So, I'm sure these areas will start figuring in. So, let me come to Mr. A.K. Singh, you know, who's very technologically savvy and I'm sure very well read in these matters. So, please tell us in the railway context specifically and in the overall context, how quickly or how well or what is your perception of yeah. the coming of AI effect? Good morning, everybody. Um, as Mr. Anthony said that AI covers uh, almost everything and uh, Mr. Sharma has uh, said that uh, AI has been experimented worldwide almost in every metro and uh, but the technology is uh, in many places is still maturing. Uh, and it will take some time. This is what uh, we have seen. Uh, in AI uh, is a basically a suitcase word, anything you can put in. So, let us not go in the uh, technical part uh, in detail uh, what uh, uh, is supervised learning or where is the reinforced learning, what language is in the, used in that 
we have now a large number of uh, uh, technical experts who are AI experts having more than 20, 30 years of experience. They can solve all your problem of algorithms and uh, how to design the system. What we should focus on for our organization, what is important for, uh, and what is our strategy within the organization. In a simple way, as we know in any AI application in business, we have two things. One, human being, people. Second, machines, computers. Now, the question is, what job we should give to the human and what job we should give to the machines? Second question, how do we combine them for best results and improving over the time? As we know, computers are good in remembering vast amount of data and they can process this very fast. Human beings are good in interacting with the people in a very flexible manner. So good thing is that we give to humans that activity which, for which humans are good and that part of activity which computers could that we should give to the computer. Second question is, how do we combine them that the combined collective intelligence gives us the best performance which no individual, neither human nor computer can do. And that's uh, the role of AI. When we combine them, then you have the learning capability within the system and system keeps on learning and improving, delivering you the best results. In a simple way, machines acting that seems like human. That's in a simple way we can say the AI. All the three main technologies of the AI, machine learning, NLP, natural language processing, and autonomous vehicle automation. All three, the metro and railways worldwide have been doing a lot of work and we have to learn and see where we can apply them in our organization. In Spain, they have done uh, for ventilators, uh, tunnel uh, station ventilators, optimizing the uh, energy consumptions and other things. In, uh, uh, Panama Metro for uh, the uh, Mastia technology in developed by Awesome. They have, they are using it for traffic and demand forecast. And Dubai Metro also trialed for uh, uh, demand and congestion management. In uh, Beijing, uh, Shanghai Metro, sorry, Shanghai Metro also they have used uh, for last two, three years the uh, uh, voice recognition for, for ticketing and uh, facial recognition for, uh, as you said, for entry exit, whether extremists or any uh, person is, is entering, that can be prevented. So a lot of trials are there, are going on, and in some places they have a reasonable level of uh, maturity. Uh, in Indian context, uh, um, like predictive maintenance can be done. Even if for customer satisfaction, using NLP and machine learning, we can uh, do the sentiment analysis, behavior analysis. You have a large number of data available on Twitter, what the uh, railway users are giving feedback. We are not able to use such a vast data uh, for, for, uh, for uh, manually, it is not possible, but with AI, such a voluminous data can be done and you can see in just last, uh, last six months how people have reacted to the cleanliness, housekeeping or the, uh, your uh, coach conductor's behavior. All data is available but it is not um, humanly possible to scan all the data. But with NLP and sentiment analysis you can do it. You can improve the cust customer satisfaction. And as I said, how to divide the task uh, between computer and human. You can do analysis of uh, your activities which are important for your organization 
uh, in terms of cost or quality or focus, narrow down your, your uh, applications, your products. Uh, you can divide, split any function in two parts, a job which should not be done by human being, it must be automated. A job which should be given only to the humans because of its risk factor involved, is a, is a severity and the judgment, that part uh, in the beginning we should not give. So to sum up, uh, <laughs> there, there is a, a huge uh, uh, potential in the AI in almost all the fields and a lot of uh, technical experts are available. And uh, even in the market uh, survey, uh, says in India around more than 7.8 billions of the market size Indian market is available. Even the worldwide, the market on AI is uh, almost doubling, is increasing. And uh, today, uh, most of the algorithms and technical uh, solutions are available, ready right? made. You have to, or technical collaborate, you have to involve all the stakeholders or the AI expert. Uh, and then uh, I, I'm sure that uh, in the next few years, <laughs> AI will be seen daily. Uh, you must have heard about this metro ride, uh, which was is a trial, uh, doing the trial for the first mile and last mile uh, transport for, for, for metro through, through some app. Uh, at, at a much lower cost and, uh, and much, uh, uh, much lesser waiting time as compared to Ola and Uber. And the company is planning to launch uh, 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 even outside India, even, even in the US, uh, and I suppose, with a lot of funding available to them. So there's a huge scope, huge market is available. Uh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think we've got a lot of insightful, uh, this thing, we'll come to the audience. And uh, let me just say that, you know, the 21st century began with a century of technology. And very soon a lot of IOTs, Internet of Things, started to come up and now you got millions and billions of IOTs. And as we got the IOTs, there was advancement in data generation, industry 4.0, so many things, predictive maintenance, passenger interfaces, whatever. So now you got big data. And uh, computers have become so powerful that they can process the big data in nanoseconds. And this big data with AI engines, AI has been around for 20, 30 years, but now it's, you know, a new dimension. So this big data being processed through AI can vastly improve safety, security, passenger interfaces, maintenance, uh, you name it, areas as Mr. A. Singh also said. So let's hear from the audience. I think India is about 10 or at least 10 years behind in the application of AI. I'm sure that with this uh, gathering, we'll be able to improve this uh, progress. Uh, yes, sir, can we have your question, please? I'd like to take three, four minutes. You mentioned about predictive maintenance, okay? Railways had so far been following the practice of preventive maintenance. After one lakh or two lakh kilometers, a locomotive coach or wagon is taken to a workshop or shed, and the major assemblies are examined, disassembled, and those beyond condemning limits replaced or repaired. Now the railways has taken rapid strides in predictive maintenance. There's something called OMRS, Online Maintenance of Rolling Stock. The OMRS systems have been installed at 20 locations in the country, and they've been working very well for the last one year. OMRS monitors the condition of the bearings and the condition of the wheels. They have a lot of sensors, and they have uh, load bars and accelerometers and all. So through that, they are able to see the dynamic behavior of the wheel. If there's a wheel defect, that will be caught. And they see the, the vibration and temperature of the bearings. If that is not within the permissible limits, that is caught. And then you have a central control for India where this information is passed, and any coach, locomotive, wagon, which is showing even the slightest signs of distress. Uh, can you come to your question, sir? Can you come to your question to the panel? No, there's no question. It is only a okay. comment. The next step is MVIS, Machine Vision Inspection System. No, you mentioned about uh, predictive maintenance. I'm sharing with the audience what Indian Railways have already done and what they are doing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Next is MVIS, Machine Vision Inspection System. 
it encompasses OMIS and also it sees the bogey defects and the undergear defects and all. Now there are two projects currently on. One is Mission Raftar, under which the trains running between Delhi to Mumbai and Delhi to Calcutta will upgrade the speed to 160 kilometers. Under Mission Raftar, a tender worth rupees 400 crores for MVIS, Machine Vision Inspection System, has already been floated. The second project is Smart Yards. 40 smart yards are planned to be built in India and for these a tender worth rupees 1000 crores is going to be floated within the next few months. So those of you who are interested in getting into artificial intelligence and into uh, this kind of systems, they are most welcome to try it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I think uh, there are a lot of opportunities. Yeah. Uh, yes, but I'll just mention one point. You see, AI can give, generate big, uh, sorry, the data logging can generate big data and you can identify a lot of things. But then machine learning to actually, within AI, process that data and actually take decisions. That's the next level. So we'll, of course, have this uh, initiative taken from all of you to take it to that next level. Uh, yes, can we have your question? Yes, please. Yeah, I think uh, very soon we will be having a many metros driverless. That will be a, another addition to it. And to what extent it will be uh, accurate? And second thing about the tracing of long-term trains, and your application is not a perfect one. The third thing, punctuality of train for long term. It's very difficult to keep this punctuality. So why not to update this AI for punctuality? Uh, so he, uh, you, you said about punctuality and what did you say before that? This driverless metro. And second was the application which is not perfect. Every five minutes is changing and not giving proper information. Uh, so I think in these areas you are already working as far as the travelers are concerned, the ticketing you have already done, the automation. See, about the, uh, what, uh, Mr. Mr. Suri. Mr. Suri, uh, I just, uh, uh, I do not know, uh, metro is a very, very capital intensive, metro or for that matter railway is the most capital intensive industry. And even OM cost. A big question mark uh, which comes to my mind and it should come to the mind of all the uh, stakeholders and the policy maker. As on date, the biggest metro like Delhi Metro is having trouble as far as the financial viability is concerned. If Delhi can have the problem, then which city can be financially viable? It's not only the capital part of it, it's the also the O&M cost. We have set certain standards, be the housekeeping, be the security, be the punctuality, it's good. We have to maintain, but we have to see how we are going to sustain financially. And that's a big, big question mark, particularly <coughs> post-pandemic. Delhi Metro is finding it difficult to think about the metro like Nagpur, Ahmedabad, Jaipur, Kochi. Some of the metro operating ratio is 300%. For every 100 rupees they earn, they spent 300 rupees. It's not the bottomless pit, where to get the money. So whatever technology we leverage, it should translate into reducing my operating cost. Ultimately, that's the end result. Technology, not for the sake of technology. First of all, the huge maintenance infrastructure which we normally need, do I really need it? Why should I have so many workshop line? Why should I have so many inspection bay line? Why can't I do predictive maintenance in the same condition monitoring? Train should come and desired input should be given and train should leave. It should occupy the minimum time. So condition monitoring is the latest camera technology is available. Now the latest metro set, you have the camera to monitor OHE, to monitor the pantograph, to monitor the current collection, to wheel profile, to see the axle temperature. So most of the things through camera or through sensor, sensors can be mounted either on the train or they can be mobile sensors through the robot. So everything should be monitored before train enters the depot. 
and it should be touched only when it is required. Particularly, like, as I mentioned, city like Mumbai, we are finding it's a huge problem to find the depot. Land is not available. And whatever land is available uh, cannot be used for stabling the train for hours. Train should come only for minimum attention. Otherwise, let them be in the, or the wayside station. So we have to reduce the cost. I'll request the, all the stakeholders how to reduce the cost. Otherwise, it's going to be big, big uh, problem to keep them financially viable. For all the cities, maybe maximum top five cities can be financially viable as far as O&M cost is concerned. But what about the other cities? We are running metro in 20 cities. I have been to Nagpur, I have been to Jaipur, I have been to Ahmedabad, I have been to Kochi. They are not able to recover their own damn cost. So this is a big, big area. So uh, we have to leverage technology. Technology is available. And as I mentioned, ticketing, mobile application is one thing. You can use mobile in a multiple way. And the latest technology is facial recognition. I, I, I'm told some of the metro like Osaka metro or Shenzhen metro or even Eurostar, they are using facial technology. Another upcoming thing is palm technology. Palm is, I think, amongst all the biometrics, be the iris, be the face, be the thumb, be the fingers, I think palm is supposed to be is most inclusive. It doesn't deteriorate with time. And it has a huge network of your veins, of your creases. So, and palm. I'm told Amazon is working on it. Amazon won, they have started, and uh, through Palm, they are making the payment. So, the, uh, we have to see that uh, how to make Metro uh, more inclusive, more smooth, so that uh, anybody and everybody, whether illiterate or literate or semi literate, nobody should feel hesitant to enter the Metro. Some of the people, particularly lower status of society, they feel, are Metro mein ghusenge, pata nahi, is mein ticket khaidne mein bhi takleef hogi. It should be, as somebody has rightly said, simplicity is the ultimate luxury. Make things so simple. Like, uh, at, uh, as Steve uh, Jobs said, when he made the Apple phone, if I, a three-year-old child should be able to work on this. Earlier, PC used to be, you have to be literate to use a PC. Now a three-year-old boy can or a child can play with a uh, mobile phone. So make things simple, make things inclusive and ridership. Ridership is not increasing. We have to think how to increase the ridership. So all these things, reduce the cost, make the simple simple. Another is uh, interoperability. Like uh, I have a problem, like there is a uh, line going from Ghatkopar to Varsova, another line which is a private sector, PPP model, Reliance Infra. I am making another metro, which is the government of Maharashtra. So tickets should be interop uh, uh, interoperability. Why, why this rolling stock cannot go on this line or to the third line or the fourth line or the fifth line? Interoperability. Then intermodal. Why this ticket purchase here should not be applicable, not only on uh, line one, line two, line three, all the line. Why not on suburban? Why not on bus? Why? So things are moving, but we have to move really fast. So uh, ultimately it boils down to economics. Technology, you need money. So you have to increase the ridership. Another area which we are working in non-fare box revenue. How to increase the non-fare box revenue? Although I don't have the real estate, I don't have the land to capitalize. Somebody talks Hong Kong is 40% NFBR. Yes, but I can't compare with the Hong Kong uh, under my condition. So we have to find the solution which are suitable to my, my condition. So we have to increase the revenue, whether it's NFBR or ticketing or whatever may. But yes, I think uh, uh, technology has to play a big, big role. Keep the minimum manpower, minimum manpower. We can't afford to have, like uh, uh, I understand some of the metros are having more than, if I include the departmental and outsource, some of the metros per kilometer manpower is more than 150. It comes to about 160, 170, 180. How to reduce this manpower? Technology, not for the sake of technology. Because see, metro, we need intensive security. Particularly in Delhi, you have CISF. It's very, very costly. Or for that matter, any metro, you have to have <coughs> some security. You have to have housekeeping. So, and ticketing. Why should I have so much of manpower in ticketing? Let it be, let everybody. So, I'll request all the stakeholders, 
because in long term financial viability is the key. If we are not financially viable, I think uh, some of the metro may have to think whether it's at least further expansion will not be possible. We may have to run the existing network, but expansion will be a big, big issue. So reduce the manpower, reduce the cost, leverage technology, and wherever you can bring, as Mr. Agrawal said, technology is available in all the fields. There is no field which is, we do not have the technology. Thank you. Uh, so I think with that, uh, we'll, uh, yes, uh, Raghu, we have one more question from you. Just one more question, sir. Uh, this is a very specific question to Sri D.K. Sharma, MD, MMOCL. As I understand, you have been given the responsibility of running the Mumbai Metro, especially the MMRD. And I being in uh, RDSO, getting it cleared for uh, your operation, I know the problem in the MMRD line number 2 and line number 7 is basically for emergency aggress. So we have suggested that you have to have a, some control over the crowd control on every station so that they, in case the crowd in a particular train is more than the specified crowd, which is not uh, possible to uh, aggress them in the emergency. So, how are you going to control that uh, uh, by using uh, artificial intelligence? The uh, excessive crowd with the help of artificial intelligence. If you have more crowd than you can accommodate. <laughs> okay. Uh, how to control the excess crowd? That is your question, huh? Yeah. How to control the excess crowd? See, uh, Mumbai has the problem of overcrowding. Tokyo has the problem of overcrowding. Hong Kong has the problem of overcrowding. Uh, Mumbai was known to have the, one of the best transport infrastructure in the country. Not today, till 20, 30 years back. But last 30 years, somehow, we have been a laggard. Delhi has come way ahead. Uh, uh, that it goes to Delhi. Uh, they have got uh, more than 350 kilometers of uh, metro network. We do not have. We are going to have about 350 kilometers of network in maybe next uh, uh, seven to eight years. So uh, that is one thing. We are so met per se. If you want, how metro is going to solve the problem? Like presently, we are running six car. We have the platform infrastructure available to run eight car. So if crowd increases, we can make it eight car. We have the latest signaling technology, which is CBTC, where we can go to a headway of what low, almost 90 seconds. Today I am having a, because I have just started a, a, about uh, 45 days back. Today, because we have limited train sets, my headway is about 11 minutes. But with getting more and more train sets, I can improve my headway to 90 seconds. I can increase the train length to, from 6 car to 8 car, plus many more metros coming. And highways coming, coastal road coming, trans harbor link coming. So Mumbai is really changing in a big, big way. We have, as I said, we have been laggard during the last 20 years. One, may, I will tell you, that's a mega project, mega project coming in Mumbai, coastal road, right from uh, Nariman Point or somewhere near Marin Lines, if you are familiar, Princess flyover, right up to Virar, we will have a coastal road. We are going to have a trans harbor link from Mumbai to Navi Mumbai which will bring you from South Mumbai to Navi Mumbai maybe in 25 odd minutes, which takes about 90 minutes today. We are going to have 15 metro lines connecting Mumbai and also the Navi Mumbai connecting the present airport to the new airports. So, and large number of flyovers. So, all these projects, I feel crowding should, will come down and should come down. And another possibility we are trying, I think it should have been tried earlier, the Trans Harbor Link. Why should it be only road? Any meg mega link which we have, it should be road come metro. Because uh, I have my own experience, whatever road you add to the system. Like I give an example, I used to stay at somewhere at Dada. I used to travel by road to uh, VT. It used to take uh, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes and becomes one hour. A flyover came, the travel time went from 60 minutes to 30 minutes or 40 minutes. But after three, three, month, three years, again it went back to the same thing. So whatever road network you add, 
that is wiped off. The advantage goes away after three to four years, anywhere in the country. Because I remember Maruti car used to be 2,000, 2,50,000, maybe 30 years back. Until five years back, it was also 2,50,000. Four wheelers have become affordable. Anybody can afford, but there is no place for road. So we have to think of metros or railways or ceiling, uh, uh, but every road should have metro connectivity also. Otherwise, I think uh, in long term, road are. So I do not know how many of you know what is the average speed on the road. Mumbai, it is about 8 km per hour. Sir, I am sorry to interrupt you. My question is very specific. My question is not general crowd of Bombay you are going to control. You are talking Mumbai. You have problem. to control the crowd in a particular train. See, that once you have a door. In, in particular train in six bogey, you cannot have hold more than 2,000 people. Whereas the capacity is 3,012 numbers. So, because your ingress time has not come as per the NFPA guidelines, you have to control the crowd in a particular train in the peak hour. I am not saying what control you are distributing. You cannot, con you cannot control the crowd. Really, that, that, that you have to control. That is the CRS instructions given to you. What is the instruction given? That unless you control the crowd to, to the limit at which you have arrived by the aggressed time, you cannot operate your uh, MOP. Show me. At, at least I am not aware. I would like yeah. to see that. Sure, sure, sure. I sure. would like to see that. Sure, see, sure, sure, see sure. I have also seen the CRS uh, approval, but sure. humanly, it is just impossible to restrict because unless you stop ticketing, unless you start stop selling the ticket, there is no way to control the crowd. That is so, what I am saying. That is so what I am saying. It, 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 since your since it, your ticketing is totally no, computerized, I am not I am not aware about this thing. Please yeah, yeah. please show me. At least yeah. I am not aware. Sure, so sure, sure. only way to control the crowd is on a particular station. You have to stop the ticket. Sure sure, no sure, other sure, sure sure. Thank you. So I think sure. we'll uh, close the session. I think there are a lot of challenges, and I'm I am sure that AI you. may be the solution to these challenges, whether it is controlling the crowd, etc. And uh, I think you brought in a very interesting point regarding the capital, you know, the cost, the economics. So whatever solutions we come up with, whether it's technology or IoT or big data or AI, we must also go back to the organization and suggest that these solutions are sustainable and these solutions are meant to actually bring down the costs drastically. So the cost could be in terms of safety, in terms of security, in terms of operation, maintenance, whatever. So I think, uh, can we finish the yeah, session? Yeah. We've already, uh, you would like to I say was, something? I was just going to add something to what the gentleman was saying. So we have implemented solutions. We have use cases with some of our partners for crowd control, where we have cameras that scan the bogies, that scan the trains, and make sure that you know, we have the adequate crowds in there, right? In a solution where you have artificial intelligence, you have all these systems integrated. You have the ticketing systems that's integrated with the camera systems. So when the cameras detect that you have a certain amount of people in the train, you have the passenger screen doors closed, you have the ticketing systems shut down so that you won't have anybody getting into the train. That's one way that you can utilize uh, artificial intelligence. All these systems are all connected. And you know, once you put that threshold in there, uh, once the, the, the train is full to a certain capacity, the cameras have already scanned, they've counted how many people in the train, um, you know, and sometimes the train will not move until you know, the, you know, the, the crowds that are assigned to that train are maintained. So there are solutions that we have, uh, you know, we've seen in other places that have been implemented and you know, Intel has partners that can help you uh, look into that in more details. Yeah, excellent. So we have possible solutions also. Uh, I think one very, sir, very last have, question, if you can keep it short. Yeah. Anthony, sir. Uh, one question from Mr. Anthony, sir. Yes. Uh, my question is, sir, as you are aware that the, uh, due to advancement in technology, there is a climate change. Now my question is, will the development of artificial intelligence harm humankind? Number two, can artificial intelligence pose safety risks if the poor, if it be pure, poorly designed or will be misused by the hackers? I would say that artificial intelligence from our 
understanding is Intel will enable sustainability. I mean, if you think about it, we humans are doing things that are popula uh, polluting the world. So with artificial intelligence, we're optimizing our systems, you know. Look at emissions in cars. When you're putting in artificial intelligence in cars, in diesel uh, technology that drive most of our trains, you'll optimize the trains, you'll optimize the uh, fuel consumption, and that in the long term will help, uh, you know, sustainability of, of the earth in terms of your question. So AI, using all the models that we have, is to our advantage. You just have to make sure that you're using it in a proper way, right? And you have to train that data to make sure that it's, you know, it's something that works towards our future. So in my, in my opinion, I think artificial intelligence is here to help us, you know. It will process all this data that we have. It will give us the best outcome out of it because there's no way we as humans can process all this data without the help of AI, which will be optimized uh, you know, to, to help us uh, live a sustainable future. Yeah. We have to use AI for the benefit of mankind. You, know? you should yes. not use AI for improving the hydrogen bomb, which will destroy all mankind. Yeah, so, you don't want to do that I too. Mean, that's <laughs> going to be foolish. Yeah. So I don't think we are headed in that direction, I hope. So we will use AI for the benefit and then derive all the benefits. So I must uh, thank the panelists for very, very insightful discussions. And some of them were very detailed, you know, very specific and actually driving into getting solutions into position very quickly. Thank you very much, Mr. Sharma. Thank you very much, all panelists. And uh, thank you very much, audience, for these wonderful questions and this interaction. Thank you so much. Check. Thank you so much. Well, the discussion was really going very good, but we are running behind the time. So thank you so much, everyone. Let's put our hands together for this panel discussion. May I please request Mr. Nitin Munoth to kindly present the memento to Shri D.K. Sharma. Thank you so much, sir. May I request Shri D.K. Sharma to kindly present the memento to Mr. Anthony Abota. D.K. Sharma, sir, to kindly present the memento. Thank you. May I please request Mr. Rajesh Agarwal to kindly present the memento to Shri A.K. Singh. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for this wonderful panel discussion. With this, everyone, we have a quick 10 minutes tea break. So we request all of you to please quickly go have your tea and please be back in 10 minutes. Thank you. And everyone out there, I would like to ask how many of you are on social media, active? I, I guess everyone uh, is on social media these days. So we request all of you to please use the hashtag InnoMetro2022. And also you can mention at the rate InnoMetro2022. Please use the hashtag and social media to kindly use these hashtags. And we believe this is the second day and we believe first day was full of information. It was gala time and networking. So if you really want to say something about InnoMetro, kindly use the hashtag and mention it. Thank you so much. We request all of you to please be back in 10 minutes. We have a quick 10 minutes break. Thank you.